Once you have your attendance, we're going to Proverbs 23, 4, and 5. All right. As you're writing, let's share. What are some things that we are grateful for that are not money or material things? Yes, okay. A strong support system. Amen. What else? Health. God. Peace. 
family. The Holy Ghost. Amen. The Holy Ghost down in my soul like the Bible says. What else? Living. Living. Being amongst the living. What are we thankful for that is not much? Would you say that those things, having those things make you rich? Would you say making those, having those things make you rich? Yes. Yes. Brother Josh said yes. Where's my yes to that? The answer is yes or no. Having those things make you rich. Okay, we got a few. What about no? Having those things does not make you rich. What about, I don't know, I'm gonna wait to see what y'all talking about, what the scripture said. See, mm -hmm. I gotta see what the word says. So with that, you wrote down 10 things, right? That are not money valued or whatever. How many would trade those 10 things that you wrote down for $10 million? $20 million. Y'all not being for real right now. Y'all not being for real. And shout out some of the stuff y'all wrote down. Shout it out again. Your family. You ain't, you ain't gonna trade your family for $10 million? <laughs> you wouldn't trade your family for joy? For peace? $10 million. Huh? The word 10 million though, 20 million. Some of y'all can spend 10 million real quick. Huh? For help. Y'all wouldn't trade 20 million dollars for help? Nope. I got a doctor. Huh? I got a doctor. I got a doctor. I mean, I'm asking, a, I mean, it's, it's a legit question because the reality, I mean, as, as we're jumping right into our series, right? Don't chase riches. Like, we literally, people, society, we've been conditioned so hard to chase riches at the cost of everything you just said, right? Health, family, um, joy, peace, everything. People literally chase riches to, to, to um, and, and forsake all of that. And, and this is what we're getting into tonight. This is why we got to talk about this. It's easy right now. Like, no, I ain't doing that. But if the right opportunity presented itself, man, come on, a, a right kind of job would get us out of church. Woo! Come on, man. A right kind of job. I'm too busy, Pastor. I can't, uh, 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 uh. They pay triple time on Sunday. They pay yeah. triple time. <laughs> I'm going to pay my time. Right. right, and so, you know, so this is what we're talking about. We're going we're gonna to get into this. I'm not going to jump ahead and get on the tangent. We're going to get right into this. So this whole thing tonight is to not chase riches. How many understand, first of all, no, I'm not going to, because it's probably in our scripture, so I'm not going to jump ahead. Go ahead, Go ahead. All right, so the thing tonight is don't chase riches. And the first verse we're going to go to is Proverbs 23, 4, and 5. And so it reads, labor not to be rich, cease from thy own wisdom. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. And so when you look down in this, it's telling us not to work to be rich. Like that's not the purpose of working is to be rich. And rich used in this scripture is abundance, like to gain riches, but to cease. When you talk about cease, you're talking about um, to leave off, right? To come to an end. So it says to cease from your own wisdom. Why? Because our own wisdom is saying get that money, right? Our own wisdom is saying I got to work, I got to make this money, I got to stack it up, I got to get that bread, right? That's not why we're working to gain with, to gain riches or to gain an abundance. And so a good question to ask yourself is, what is my focus, right? What is my focus? Yes, we all have dreams, we have goals, we have desires and things, but what is my focus? 
How is my dreams and my desires and what I'm hoping to gain, how is that giving to the kingdom of God? How is that fulfilling my assignment that God has purposed me to? Sure, everybody wants to be a multi-million dollars, but how is that going to help you advance the kingdom or to do what you were supposed to do for the Lord, right? And so um, that's what this is talking about. We're not just working to gain riches or to stack money, right? That's of our own wisdom. I mean, I mean good, good point. Is it wrong to have wealth? Is it wrong to have a lot of money? No. Are, are y'all... Make sure we clear on that, all right? All right? God wants us to have money now, okay? If we're in the kingdom, we, we you know, we're, we are growing in wisdom and understanding to live holy, to be set apart, all that, right? But we're growing in the kingdom to get wealth, all right? Wealth is our portion, okay? And so um, don't think, you know, I don't want to be in church, I don't want to be saying that you got to be broke and suffering and, and beat down, nah. If I'm gonna go through suffering and, and get darts thrown at me, I wanna have some money, <laughs> all right? <laughs> okay, and so so it's okay to have money, it's just not okay with, you know, every motive to get there, all right, to get to that end. So this is what we're talking about tonight, right? Not chasing it, but it's definitely for us, all right, go ahead. Exactly, what's the motive behind that? I'm going to go to Proverbs 27, 15, I'm sorry. Proverbs 15, verse 27. It reads, he that is greedy of grain, of gain, troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. Greedy, what does it mean to be greedy? He always think about food, eat too much. Greedy. Want more than you need. Never satisfied. You want what others have. Exactly. And so some of the definitions here of greedy when we look into our concordance and our study um, materials. Covetedness, right? Covetedness is when you want something so bad, you desire that you will do evil to get it. You will do anything to get it, right? So it's saying, don't covet, right? Um, it's when you gain wrongfully. And even in the, as I was studying, it talked about you get this through violence, right? So you want it so bad, you will hurt somebody to get it. And so it's saying here, um, he that is greedy of gain troubleth whose house? Whose house is in trouble? your own house. You disturb your own house when you are so covetous, when you are so greedy, when you are desiring things um, so much that you'll do anything to get it. Where are your affections? Right? Where are your affections? Have you ever been around a greedy person? Or a covetous person, right? What are some characteristics of those people that you just noticed right off hand? A greedy person or a covetous person. Someone that would do anything, anything to get something. Backstab. Even that it'll disrupt their own home. Backstab, yeah? yeah What's yeah. another characteristic? They're selfish. They're selfish, yeah? What else? Actors. 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 Faith. Faith. Manipulators. No compassion. Right. Liars. 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 Cheaters. They're crazy. They're feisty. Like, I mean, just look, look at the natural. If you look in the last year or so, like all the big, some of the big major banks over the last couple years that have folded, right? And even one of the biggest banks, um, in operation in the U.S. just, what, a month or so ago? And it all came crumbling down, right? The whole thing folded, and then when they went in there, sent government investigators, they said it was grossly mismanaged. It was grossly, you know, there was no oversight, not enough oversight. The people were in there getting that bread, right? They got so greedy, so caught up, 
we get money, get money, that it was a lot of dishonesty, a lot of you know greed, and 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 now the whole operation shut down, right? A whole bunch of people that invested into that, right, are missing there because they kept pouring money into it, and 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 there's a whole bunch of houses that are sick right now, right? So so uh, we got to be careful how we how we chase after money. Some people they are. They, they bent on getting some money, right? That's their whole focus, right? And so um, just gotta be careful. Be careful with how we get it and the motives behind trying to be rich. Uh, first of all, you don't wanna really be rich. You wanna be wealthy, all right? Wealthy is another level. You know, rich, it, it really just stops with money, right? You can be rich and no joy, no good health, right? No uh, everything. Look at Steve Jobs, y'all. Steve Jobs, right, he passed away. But he had a great quote some years back before he passed away. He, you know, he had, a, he had a, a kind of sickness or something that took him out of here, right? But he had all that money, right? You're the, the CEO of everything of Apple. And he said, and he said, I would trade all of this in for help and to be able to live and have my life. Some people be like, man, I don't care about nothing else but money. But then people that got the kind of money like they said, man, I would trade all of this to be able to live healthy and have a, you know, a, a nice life. So we just got to, you know, put money in its proper value, in its proper place, all right? And we want it, right? But we don't want, we shouldn't want it so much that we sacrifice everything else. So, go ahead. What makes people become greedy? If what makes them become greedy? I have to say envy. Jealousy, what else? Right, not having anything and like mother and how it feels. And lack of identity. Excess, yeah, lack of identity, right? Everything into things, into, into stuff. And not really into um, who God wants you to be, right? And you think that you're identified by the stuff that you have. All right, we're going to go over to Proverbs, the 28th chapter. And verse 20 and then down to 22. Do I have anybody that wants to read? Verse 20 and then verse 22. All right. A faithful man shall abound. What does abound mean? To abound. If I'm abounding. Flourishing, right? I'm flourishing. I'm, I'm, I'm moving. I'm growing. A faithful man shall abound with what? Blessings. So in order to abound with blessings, we have to be what? What do we have to be to, to abound with blessings? We have to be faithful, right? We have to be faithful. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent, right? What does the word haste mean? Quickly, right? Quick money. All money ain't good money. Young people say that all money ain't good money. Right? Quick money ain't all good money. He that is faithful, right? A man that is faithful shall abound with what? Blessings. You want the blessings of the Lord? Remain faithful. Faithful to the word, faithful to the house of God, faithful to the things that God has told you to do. Then you go down to 22. He that hasteth to be rich hath a what? Whoa. You in a rush to get rich, you have a what? What do, what do we know? What does pastor teach us? The evil. What is the Hebrew word for evil? Who remember? Who remember? He say all the time. All the time. We should have this down. Somebody checking their notes. They turn it up and down, round and up. See, you keep your same packet. You better answer the question. Come on. What's the Hebrew word for evil? Somebody said it. <laughs> Raw. 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 Resting in. And what is it? What is it? What's the definition? A man looking out for himself, right? So if, if, 
if he that is hated to be rich hath an evil eye, he's looking out for himself again, right? Which means if, if your desire is just to be rich, if your desire is just to gain riches, you're looking out for yourself. You're not looking to advance the kingdom of God. You're not looking to do what God has told you to do. Then it says, and considereth not that the po that poverty shall come upon him. Why? If I'm gaining this money and I'm getting it quick, how is poverty going to come? Why am I even thinking about poverty? Because I got money. What'd you say? It's going just as quick as it's coming, right? It said it's flying toward the heavens, right? You're getting all that quick money and it's flying toward the heavens. The I or X. Right. <laughs> This is why the church speaks against, teaches against, all right, stands against believers playing the lottery. Come on, people of God. <laughs> y'all don't got no scratch off. They just scratch off so the odds. Y'all heard the story about my mama. <laughs> my mama was in the gas station. Oh, man. It was some years ago. And she was in line, and there was a there was somebody in line before her, and and they was they was buying some scratch offs. He in line, and she didn't know who they were at first, and and when they turned around and they saw her, and she saw him, and and he was a pastor, and she knew he was a pastor, and he tried to hide them scratch offs. Oh, he was nervous, right? He was nervous buying scratch offs, y'all. Look at the statistics, right? People that win the lottery, they are miserable. They are miserable. There is a high percentage of people that win the lottery and they're miserable. Everybody's not miserable, but a high majority of them are. Why? Because they they got rich quick, right? And they lost their mind. They couldn't handle it. They didn't have the capacity to be able to handle that kind of money. And it brings a, a, a high element of stress, right? Because everybody coming at you, right? I mean, so, I mean, good or bad. And so it's 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 just not good to to get a bunch of money quick, especially that you didn't work for, you didn't labor for, that you don't have the capacity for. And so um, don't just be praying, God, drop a million dollars in my bank account. Come on, some of y'all, we wouldn't even see no more. If God dropped a million dollars in your bank account, we probably wouldn't cease. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna they say no. They don't come. Um, I they think you would. It's gonna be hard though. A they million dollars overnight. Over you know, everybody can't handle that, right? Everybody can't handle it. And so, let's pray that that God helps us to have a capacity to handle it, though. Okay? Okay? Why not? Why not you? Why not me? Okay, um, so but let us have the let us have the resolve, Lord, that if you give us the wisdom to be able to get that kind of you know wealth, that we don't lose our mind, we don't lose our soul, you know, we don't get lost out here. But hey, what brothers and sisters such as oh, they in Hawaii, but well, they've been in Hawaii six weeks, very okay? good, right? So you know, um, let, let let's get it the right way. Let's let God help us. Let's look up, you know, really quickly. Is that all right? No, Look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Favorite scriptures about this. Deuteronomy 8. Somebody read it out loud. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Hey, Brother Elijah, can you get them a mic? Whoever's going to read it out loud. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. Who's going to wave your hand and read it? Deuteronomy 18. Um, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. We should remember the who? The Lord. So before he even started really talking about this, he said we ought to remember the Lord. That means his lordship, his word, following after his statutes and his, his blueprint and will for our lives. And when we do that, here is what he, what does he tell us, Sister Campbell? For it is he that it is he that gives us what? Power. Everybody say power. power. It is he that gives us power to create, right? To get wealth. And so, and what's the last part of that? That he may establish his covenant with you. That he may, come on, y'all. 
God wants us to get well so that he can establish his what? His covenant involves money. Are y'all listening to me? All right. So if we're going to get, in, you know, be connected to the covenant, if we're going to really be established in the covenant, uh, money is involved in that covenant. All right. Righteousness and, and holiness and all of that, but money too. Okay. And so, and so let's learn how to uh, remember the Lord and let's really believe the scriptures, y'all. We ought to be believing like crazy. Y'all Y'all see where we are going. Y'all see what God is in just a matter of months when we just said we're going to believe big this year. And we said we're going to trust God and we're going to and we're going to not doubt him. And and what did God start doing this year? He started wiping off hundred thousand dollar uh, loans on people's credit reports right in here, right now. They sit here right now, right? Wiped off hundred thousand dollars. Right, and he started blessing others, and and he started uh, answering prayers and saving folks and restoring folks. God is God is doing something, y'all. Come on, y'all ain't y'all ain't talking back to me tonight, y'all. See, y'all. Hey, look, when we, when we get over there to the other side, y'all, to this to the to our new place, y'all, that didn't just happen because we not, that happens because we was believing. Right? We were believing God and we were sowing, y'all. Let me tell you, there, there was this homeless man at Bethel. Stand me straight right now. This homeless brother, this white brother, he, he homeless his life, right? He'd come take showers and, and at Bethel and all that kind of stuff. But he, he had faith, right? He ain't even been in this church today, but he had faith and he and his mama was a Pentecostal preacher and and so every day he would see me, and he was he would come to me. He'd say, "Man, I'm believing God. I'm believing God's going to get you a building. God's going to get you a building." And he and he had so much faith that one day, you know, God was like, God put in my spirit. He was like, "Man, get that man some money. Get him so into his faith, right?" He was like, "I'm going to help you." He was like, "I'm going to help you get a building." I'm looking like, but you don't discredit nobody, right? But but. Because his mom's a realtor, and he really believed, like, I'm going to help my mama, I'm going to get my mama, we're going to get you a building, how about this, this, that, and the other. I didn't sow in his ability or capacity to get us a building. But the Holy Ghost told me to sow into him according to his faith. All right? And so that was in, like, December. You know, December, January, something around there. I sold a hundred men. I had some. I sold a hundred dollars to this man just because he had crazy faith to believe big. Because you know, just he believed God, and so I'm like, man, I'm sowing into your faith. All right, and so we know the end of this story, right? We've been sowing into this, to this. To, to this thing, y'all. This is what we've been sowing into. This is what we've been praising God for. Everything that we've been believing, God, God's been answering stuff. Every every month, God is doing something, y'all. And how many know God ain't done yet? God ain't done yet, y'all. And so we're going to keep believing. We're going to keep sowing. We're going to keep, all right, uh, prospering and, and, and watching God work. Y'all, and so y'all don't 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 get nervous when we when we move, all right? Because we're gonna take this to a whole other level. We're gonna take our faith to another level, and, and if we can believe God for that, we can believe God to to pay off everything and be debt free, not just church debt free, but we can believe God that every household is debt free. Yeah. All right, come on, y'all. Y'all ain't see that was a lazy clap. See, I see I've been trying to get a hold of some faith. All right? And we're not just talking about the kind of, you know, just necessarily what God just wiped out all the debt. Well, God can do that, right? But, but we're praying that God gives us big wisdom, big understanding to be able to just manage the boom and make these moves, this investment, right? Shift this over here, right? And, and when we're faithful over a few things, right? Now God can give us, you know, increased wisdom, and you know He can make us rulers over more. Come on, y'all! I need y'all to, I need y'all to raise y'all level of faith, all right? Everybody say, Lord, increase our faith. All right, increase our faith. We're going to believe God, and so we ain't gonna go over there lazy, y'all, because we know what we believe, and God just, 
just answered prayers, okay? And so we're going to keep on believing. We're going to keep writing down stuff. And we're going to keep honoring God with our praise, our life. I, I told you, I said, our life is praise. So you may not always be, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But just your continents of just walking. Papa says we walk by faith and not by what? All right, that's praise all in itself. But we can walk by faith, that's praise unto God. That, that, is, that is bringing glory to God when we can walk by faith. In spite of whatever it looks like, it feels like, whatever challenges that we may experience, walking by faith is praise to God. All right? And you come on that with a mouth of praise, singing to the God with a loud praise, a loud voice. Y'all, that's going to unlock everything that we're believing. All right? How many believe it with us? Come on, let's clap, let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands. Go ahead. Thanks. I was thinking when he was talking about um, the lottery, and another example is um, if you've looked at that's ESPN and the 30 for 30 got broke. How many of you have watched some of those episodes? That that quick money that those athletes get some time in. We talk about like you you don't have a lot growing up, and then you have a lot. And I think it was it was a special on Allen Iverson how he used to just go on trips, right? Take his money, party, do whatever. The riches of the land wouldn't pack clothes, wouldn't do anything. Cause he, he gonna buy everything for him and his whole entourage, every city he went to. And he did this every week, just, just throwing this money away, right? And how the love of money will make you not even think consciously, right? It'll have you acting brand, brand new, right? And take away all that wisdom. And that's why we are seeking for wisdom for our finances because God is not gonna trust us with more, right? if we don't know how to handle more, right? And I, I think it's a, it's a wake up call for everyone, right? Like, God can't trust us if we're not good stewards, right? So we're gonna go to Proverbs eleven twenty eight. And it reads, he that trusteth in his riches shall what? Fall, but the righteous shall Flourish as a branch, right? When you trust in anything that is not God, right? Here it's talking about riches, you're gonna fall. Why? Because God wants us to trust in Him and Him alone, right? But if we are righteous, the other verse said, if we remain faithful, we shall flourish. When you talk about flourish, you're talking about growing. You're talking about break forth. Like Pastor was saying, God will give you more if he can trust you with more. So we got to be righteous and we, and we got to be faithful. He's not going to trust you with a lot and you're going to sow it into bad ground. Right? Or you're going to go out and promote sin. Right? He's not, he's not going to trust you with more if you're not going to be a good steward over it and to use wisdom. And here's a whole other scripture, too. Um, somebody look it up for me. You know, I'm like, so I'm not going to try to quote it where it's at. But the Bible speaks about if we're not faithful over, you know, money, how can he trust us with true riches? Look that scripture up for me. And it's speaking to um, true, uh, the true riches is speaking to spiritual things, revelation and, and, and that kind of knowledge and, uh, of, of who God is. So if we can't even do money right, how are we going to have a real relationship with God? Luke 16 11. Luke 16 11. Why don't Dean, look at Deacon in the back. He on it. Come on, Deacon. Luke 16 and 11. Let's go ahead and read that out loud. Read, what does that say? Riches. There's you gotta some, go home, Pastor. You gotta go to 12. Too. You gotta go to 12. Can't leave it right there. 
And, and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, I know that's I love that one too. Who shall give you that which is your own? Oh God. All right. <laughs> people, people want to leave stuff, right? But 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 lazy about helping somebody else. But people want something on their own, right? They want to lower it over something, but when they under somebody else, they treat it, they treat it like it's nothing. All right, so that, that's, a, that's a heat check. All right, that's a heat check for everything that we do. We're asking God for stuff. God, give me that promotion. Well, how do we work for our boss now? Give me my own business. Give me my own business. But you're late to work every day. Help us. Right. Lord. Right. And so, and so uh, Lord, help us. Y'all, come on. So we're unfaithful in these natural things. How can we get true wisdom? to be able to really grow and prosper and thrive, okay? So, uh, Jesus will help us. Jesus will help us. Uh, that's the thing, that's the, that's the second part of our thing for this whole year, right? That, that ain't going Believe nowhere. Believe me, Jesus Believe will help me, us. Believe me, Jesus will help us. He, he, he put a subtopic, hey, Jesus gave us a subtopic and it ain't going away, praise the Lord. All right, go ahead. We're going over to Matthew 13, verse 22 known as the parable of the sower and the seed. And verse 22 reads, Proverbs, I'm sorry, Matthew 13, 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the what? Word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. When you get money and you're looking out for yourself, chasing after the money, what is it doing to the word? Choking it out. What 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 happens when you choke? And when you choke at someone, what come on, Sister Kim, what you say? You can't breathe. Why do you say come on? Because he said it. I was trying to say something. Oh, she said it. She said you can't breathe. You can't breathe, right? When you're choking, you can't breathe, right? You're gasping for breath. So if you're chasing money, you're going to be gasping for the word because that that desire and that pull and that love to get more of it, right, is taking you away from the word of God. I don't know about you, but I can't live without the word of God. The breath of God, right? I don't want to live in these days without the word of God. So again, as Pastor Derek's question was, was stated, how much money would it take the things you are grateful for? Some people said the Holy Ghost. Some people said God. Some people said the word. He said 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000. 20 million, I'm sorry. Yeah, none of these things should move me. Hallelujah. 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 Any comments there? On, on the, you do? No, I said we ain't going. We ain't going. He said we ain't going. We ain't going to be choked out by riches. All right, we're going on to Proverbs 13, 7. It's good to see it in the word for yourself. Amen. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. How is that? Unselfish. What else? How is that? Tying back to what we said at first. Somebody that got all this money, make themselves rich, but they have nothing. How can I have everything? My big house, my big my dog, my cat, my kids, no worries, everything on automatic drive, Uber drafts. I'm living the life. I'm just going out chilling. But how can I have all that and have nothing? It's, it's fake. It's counterfeit. Or I'm empty. Right? It's fleeting. It's going away. I don't have any substance. I don't have any joy. I don't have any hope. All I got is in these things that I can't take with me, right? 
I mean, they, they used to do it. I don't know if they do it now. You ever been to a funeral where they turn all the cell phones and monies in the casket and uh, all y'all all people say, They say they be throwing money and rings in the casket, thinking little June Bug gonna take it with them. And I'm like, them undertakers is getting paid. Cause that money can't go. Y'all never seen them? Oh, it's a blessing that you have. Amen. But there, there's some people they do that. They put cell phones in. Back in the day, pages and money in the casket when their loved ones passed away. Cause they had all that money, you know, they 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 let them take it with them. No. Exactly. None of that is going with them. It ain't going with them. Somebody's taking all that on out and, and pocketed it, right? So we know that the riches of this world are fleeting. And so he that make himself rich, yet have nothing. Many find themselves in that place, right? Um, and, and even now you see, again. Celebrities, news, you look at stuff, man, all these multi-million dollar business folks, they spent years making themselves rich, and then they get to slipping up, turning on each other, government crack on them, and, um, and then they go to jail, right? They go to jail, and they lose all that stuff, they lose their families, and so you make yourself rich, and you end up having nothing, but there is that make of himself poor, right? yet have great riches. I think we need to key in, uh, again, right there, he that maketh himself poor, that ain't making himself broke, y'all. Don't get it twisted. It ain't making yourself broke and you ain't got no money kind of type, but it is, uh, yeah, it's making yourself poor uh, humility, right? I am humble. I am at a destitute place where I totally need God, right? The Bible says this poor man cried, right? Okay? And the Lord what? The Lord heard him. And he did what? He delivered him out of what? All of his troubles. Okay? And so those that make him himself rich, you have nothing because you don't have God. You can't feel God. You can't get God's attention. Right? You can't, right? You, you can't get the help you need when you really need some spiritual guidance and direction. And so, but he that making himself poor, he can have everything. All right? I'm telling you, favor is better than that. I mean, there are some real destitute people poor in the spirit, right? They don't have a lot of wealth, but they live a very wealthy life, right? And be around all kinds of stuff, got everything. God take care of them, provide for them, and, and you just like, man, how do you get all that? They just be like, God, right? Because they really wholeheartedly depend on the Lord. And so that's how we have to be. And when we can do that, amen, God can give us, he can give us the wealth, because he can trust us, and then he can give us the true riches, the, the, the revelation and intimacy, right? Going back to Deuteronomy, giving us the power, all right, power to get it, power to create it, power to develop ideas and thoughts and strategies and um, uh, gives us wisdom to connect with right people to bring development into fruition, y'all. Come on, y'all. Everybody that's in here, there is a multi-million dollar gift in you, right? There is, there is strategies in us right now. And you got, how many got the Holy Ghost? Right, wave your hands. Right, there is wealth inside of you right now, okay? There is wealth inside of you. There is something inside of us. And so and so we don't worship and praise God to get wealth. We worship because we want to be near and dear to him. But in that, God gives us the power to create something. Why? Because God wants us to expand the kingdom, okay? Y'all, nobody want to... Nobody want to be a part of a kingdom that's broke. Come on. Who want to be a part of a kingdom and ain't no, nobody got no money? Who want to be a part of a church and everybody broke and poor and don't nobody got nothing? Come on, y'all. That's an embarrassment and an indictment to the kingdom of God. Y'all, when, when, when nobody in the church is thriving, nobody in the church is winning, but we, we be praising hard. We pray, man, they be praising God, but they broke. 
Come on, y'all. That is not God's will. I need y'all to hear me, all right? So when we praising God, y'all, we're not just going through the motions, all right? Again, if I say holiness. Holiness. As we are worshiping God and we are drawing near to him and, and setting ourselves apart from sin, as we draw near, we are, we are believing that God will help us activate, all right, wealth, wealth strategies and, and these kinds of things to help us expand the kingdom, y'all, to bring people in. Money answers all things, okay? You guys, you have a church full of people that, that are, are, you know, some people that are making six figures and some making, making millions, y'all. We can, we can answer some of the problems in our community, okay? We can help people, train people, and, 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 and help bring stability to families, you know, not just by giving them money all the time, but, but helping them to see and get close to, to the Lord, all right? Get close to Him. We can help you, you know, people can own businesses in here, and, and we can employ people. Come on, y'all. Y'all, God is expanding our territory. Y'all, I want to get into that area, all right? We, we want to get into these new areas that God is putting us in, and we want to be a blessing to that area. We want people that can have the kind of businesses and jobs to employ people and, and to train people and to, and to bring people into a, a, a wealth of knowledge and understanding on how to create and build things, and, and we can literally transform a community, y'all. We want to not just have revival. Revival, yes, but a part of revival and souls being saved is, is people getting unlocked into their true design and purpose, y'all. All right? When, um, when, when, when those revivals of old, right, when those revivals was happening, y'all, the whole town, the, that whole community was being transformed. This is what we ought to be looking forward to. We, we're not just going into a new space to, to, to bring, just to have revival services. Revival services is cool, but we want to revive the community, okay? We want to revive the community, and, and, and people are, are being unlocked to some true, true riches, all right? Come on, y'all, true riches. And so, and so we're building people up. We're being built up, and we're able to, to give and to, and to create, you know, platforms and, and, and again, have different kinds of, um, you know, mechanisms in place that people can grow, you know? And so, look, y'all, we, this is, this is a part of believing big, all right? This is a part of believing big. If God can give us the things he's been giving us already, we can continue to believe him for bigger, even bigger things. How many going to believe with us? All right? We got to keep believing. I don't want to, we are not going over there just to get stagnated and to get comfortable and say, oh, man, all right, man, God, God did some things and we're grateful and we're just going to have a little church over here and just, you know, have a little good time. No, we're trying to bust all through that community. We're trying to break out the breaker, that breaker anointing all in that whole area, okay? And so it's going to take us being unlocked. It's going to take you and your neighbor, all right, everybody in here to be unlocked, okay? To be able to build some things and create things and, just, you know, establish some, some, some new norms, okay? So, so this ought to be, this is our mentality. Right? And all that, right? And most importantly, winning souls. Okay? We're winning souls, unlocking people. My favorite scripture, again, um, Second Peter, I always, this is my favorite scripture, y'all. One of them, one of the I can't say that. It's one of my favorite, right? But from Second Peter 1 and 3, right? According as his divine power has he given unto us, everybody say, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Okay, so when that seed of promise was put in us, in the Holy Ghost, right, we have everything we need right now. You have everything you need. You have all the wisdom, understanding, power, grace, strength. You have it all in you right now. You got it, right? That pertains to life and godliness. And then verse four, that we may partake in the divine nature. Okay? And so there's a divine nature um, that God has designed for us to partake in. We are not regular people. We are peculiar people. 
Let's stop acting normal. Let's stop acting worldly, okay? We are not up. Jesus said, I am, my kingdom is not of this world, okay? Our kingdom that's within us is not of this world, this, this little G-O-D, not of this world. We have, a, we have a kingdom that is not made with man's hands, okay? And so we got to act like it. We got to act like, look at somebody and say, act like you know. All right? Act like you know. All right? And so that ought, to, that ought to raise our level of awareness, sensitivity to the Holy Ghost. That ought to raise our confidence level. Not pride, but it's confidence in God. God, all right, I am somebody. You know, people that be like, y'all church folks, y'all think y'all better than other people. We are. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Technically, all right, for believers, what makes us better, what makes us greater is not nothing of our own. It's the fact that what we carry, okay, who we carry. We carry the promised seed. We carry an eternal seed in us. And so that makes us greater. It's not to put anybody down and act self-righteous and, and, and weird. No, it is, but the reality, there is an advantage that we have. And so let's not be, let's not be self-righteous with it, but let's walk, let's walk in it, all right? God, I, I got something, and I want to unlock it, and I want to walk, right? I want to walk out my purpose. How people be saved 20, 30 years, never activated. Never find their, never really understand their design. Never, never walk in their true purpose. Y'all, that is a shame before God just to go play church for a bunch of years. I don't want to play church and go through and, and have a shout. Good man, I shouted today. Man, I spoke in tongues for two hours. Well, did you get activated? I, I spoke in tongues for, for two hours. Did God drop any strategy in your spirit? Look, y'all. Kirk Franklin said that. He said, well, teach me how to live when I shout is done, right? <laughs> teach me how to live. Teach me how to get well. Teach me how to build and, and, and leave, uh, you know, a, a good father leaves an inheritance for his children's children. All right, y'all. Come on. God, I want to be able to leave an inheritance, not just little, little dead pools and stuff that, that they just trash on. I don't want to leave out of here, Hilda, right? And my family fighting over a couple uh, 50 inch plasma TVs. Oh, my grandma, no, I mean, uh, family members be dying. They be fighting over plates and china cabinets. Coats. Coats, leather coats and hats. Come on. We, we want to leave our leave an inheritance for our children's children. And so that means we got to get close enough to God where it goes beyond the shout. Come on. If, if, if our nearness to God stops at the shout and speaking in tongues and a good feeling, man, I feel good today. I, we had church. If it don't go beyond that, we are missing God. God is so much deeper his wisdom is so far beyond that surface. That is surface. Well, some of y'all like, man, that's deep, man. I was speaking in tongues at church. That's surface. All right? There's so much depth to God. There's so much that God wants to reveal even beyond the speaking with tongues and, the, and praying and crying and feeling a cool breeze of God's presence on us. Y'all, come on. Let's go. Everybody say, let's go deeper. All right, we got to go deeper, all right? But don't chase the riches, chase the true riches, chase the intimacy, chase, come on, chase the presence of God. That's why Moses, that's why Moses said in, in, in um, you know, uh, what is it, Exodus 33, God, don't, don't send us if your presence don't go with us. I don't care nothing about these riches and the land, because God told him, I'll give you the land, you have all of the riches and, and you can have all of that, Moses. Moses said, uh-uh. If your presence ain't going with us, don't send me there. I don't want 
promoted because it doesn't even matter if I don't have true riches. All right, and so so let's chase true riches. Let's chase presence. Let's chase holiness. Let's chase what it really means to be righteous and set apart. And when we do that, intimacy. All right, now we can unlock true rich. I mean, we can unlock ma the mammoth, the unholy mammoth. Right, money. It is what it is. All right, and and when we can unlock that, now we can be a real blessing to others. Okay. We can be a blessing. Thank God, y'all see, y'all see Black China. <laughs> she got out there, got all them riches. Her name ain't Black China no more. What is it now? Angela. She's Angela now, right? And so God working on her, right? She, 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 she's trying to transform. She even got the Baphomet um, tattoo removed off of her. Now she's trying to be for real, say. Y'all, and she's trying to get a hold of true riches. Okay, so so uh, look, y'all, I'm, I'm grateful. God is trying to save folks. He's trying to lead us into 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 you know a right relationship with Him. You know, from the rich and the poor. All right, so so let's get in where we fit in, y'all. God got this. God got riches for us. He has wealth for us, and so let's go and unlock it. Let's get close to God. Let's not give Him lazy stuff. Okay, lazy commitments, lazy worship, lazy, just lazy. All right, let's give him our all. Let's give him our all. Amen. Amen. Um, so we're going to Proverbs 22, verse 16. And so as he's unlocking it, he's, he's blessing us in it, and he's given us all these creative ideas and ways to expand the, the kingdom. It says, he that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. And so what does that mean? As God is blessing you and as He's as he, you're further in the kingdom, we're, we're not to use our money to oppress the poor. What does it mean by oppress the poor? Y'all, y'all not gonna y'all not gonna like it. I'll be picking on y'all, on y'all little God, but the Lord had me search out how much does it actually cost to produce a pair of Jordan tennis shoes? What y'all think? How much it costs to just produce? This is this number is with labor, too. Materials and labor. We got five dollars, we got three dollars. Labor. And it, it, it takes at least six to eight hours to fully make one pair. So with materials and labor, it costs $16. How much the newest release costs? $300. And you gotta get in a wrap for the kitty. And how much is the reset? Depend on the shoe, but it, it can get up there in price, correct? For a $16 pair of shoes, which means labor, they might be getting a dollar a pair of materials, about eight dollars. They get a dollar an hour that they work. Oppressing the poor to further your riches. Help us, Lord. And we support. How many and it's money? just like that I was gonna talk about y'all. It probably cost about, I didn't look it up, then, but it, it probably cost not that much to make some of these purses, right? Same, the same, the same thing, right? Or what? Yeah, all of them, all of them, right? But when we think about it this way, looking through, that's what I think the Wisdom Series is teaching us, looking at every area of our life through the Word of God, right? What you say? It's not saying not to buy it, it's saying when you get your wealth, how you, if the Lord bless you with your business to create and to do that, if you have people working with you, you want to make sure that you're, you're doing it fairly, right? You're not just doing it to get the most money where someone else is suffering, right? All right, and then we're going to go over to 1 Timothy. This is where we're in. It's a little bit of reading. Chapter 6. Verse 3 through 11. 
and then we'll give out information concerning our sacrifice. Amen. Verse number three. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting questions, doubting questions and strifes of words. Wherefore cometh envy, strife, railing, evil surmising, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, uh, from such withdraw thyself, right? So here again, if we're going after gain that is not of God, it says we are destitute of the truth. And Pastor kind of alluded to this earlier. What does that word destitute mean? Poor, without, desperate. Who wants to be in a place where they're desperate for the truth? Because you're in pursuit of gaining things that are not of the kingdom. But six, what does it say? But godliness with contentment is what? Great gain. Look at somebody and say contentment. What does contentment mean? Contentment. Satisfied. Right? I'm satisfied. I'm settled. God, any way you choose to bless me, I'll be satisfied. God, if this is for me, thank you. If it's not, I'm not desiring something. I'm not being covetous. What does seven say? For we brought what? Nothing into this world. And it is certain that we can carry. Woo. What did you bring? What about your car? What did you bring? Your house? Your kids? Ooh, we got some ooh. We brought nothing. It all belongs to him. Eight, go ahead and read eight together. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. What does it say here? At the, at the minimum, food and clothes. That's it. You should be content if the only thing you have is food and clothes. Help, Lord. That means Christmas comes, children. Your birthday comes, children. You got food and clothes. You should be what? Satisfied. Content. You get straight A's on your report card. You got food and clothes. You should be satisfied. Help, Lord. Anniversary. Anniversary. Oh, jeez. Mother's Day. If you get that job and you start making a lot of money, 
but you find yourself falling into temptation, it's time to probably go. Right? 11, but thou, O man of God, we talked about flee these things, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So what are you going towards? You're going toward righteousness, right? Godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness, right? And then 12, fight the good fight of faith, lay a hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. People will see you, right, when you are going after godliness, right? And not chasing money, riches, things, idols. Hallelujah. I mean, and that's a praise before God, too, like we saw about earlier. It's not always about, you know, lifting our hands out, hallelujah, walking in this, with this kind of heart's desire, right? Following after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fighting the good fight of faith to keep that at the forefront of our minds and our hearts. That is praise unto God. That brings him glory. And that's that's just like praising him. Alright? So so don't just don't just be praising God. Their hands and shouting in church, but then raggedy checking for all the other stuff, and and not aligning ourselves up, aligning ourselves up with what we should follow after, right? Righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Okay, let's do both. Because if you do this, I'll tell you one thing: if we follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, we won't have no problem coming to church praising God. Y'all ain't talking back to me tonight. Y'all ready to go home? Let me tell you, we truly follow after those things. It's going to be so much in our hearts, an abundance of praise in our hearts that that we will come in so much gratitude and honor before God that we don't even have to wait to praise service and say, "Oh man," we we will come in with our hands lifted up and our mouth full of praise and a heart of thanksgiving. We'll come in ready to bless his name. All right. So let's follow after the things that matter. Everybody shout righteousness. Righteousness. Godliness. Godliness. Faith. Faith. Love. Love. Patience. Patience. Meekness. Meekness. These are the things that matter. So let's follow after these things. That means that means we have to study to show ourselves approved, okay? We need to study what it is, what righteousness is. We need to study what godliness is. We need to study what faith is and what love is and what patience is and what meekness is. And when we study these things and we learn these things, okay, now, uh, now uh, again, it's going to fill our hearts up with praise, and it's going to fill God's heart up. It's, all right, it's going to fill him up with a desire to want to bless us even more. Somebody, people say, well, favor ain't fair. Favor is absolutely fair. God ain't messy. God is not messy. You, you can't tell me, you can't show me somebody that got a whole bunch of stuff and they raggedy as life. And you talking about they blessed. Nah, they raggedy. All right? They, some, some people got a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of stuff, and people say they blessed. Nah, they raggedy. They just found ways and deceit, deceitful ways to get money. And that's not blessings, okay? So um, don't fall for that, right? Because that stuff comes down. Uh, but when we follow after the right things, okay, God will fill us up. God will give us the wisdom to get, the, to get that stuff the right way. And, and, and then live it, okay? So uh, I'm done. Any questions before we get into the uh, the sacrifices? All right, this lady Valley came over. To me. I said, oh, Lord. All right, y'all ready for this? It's not bad. We used to have, a, we used to have a real in-depth sacrifice. Yes. Like, we'll, we'll get back to those, but that's kind of in-the-year in kind of sacrifice. Yeah. But all right, we're back. So as we're studying our wisdom um, and finances, we're going along with the sacrifice, all right? So starting midnight tonight through June the 8th, everybody is quiet, through June the 8th, number one, we're going to eliminate fast food from our budget. No chicken, Pastor. 
Those Starbucks. From the gas station, yes. Yeah, he, you all know he like gas station chicken. Um, but sit down restaurants, sit down dinner restaurants do not apply because they're cooking the food, right? Um, so behind that, we don't want quick microwave, we want meals that we're buying food, right? I, I know, I know. Two, you're gonna review your bank statement and commit to giving up your most expensive habit. I know, Amazon, it might be for some of us. Lord Jesus. Snacks, it might be for others of us. The kids, whatever it is. Kids, this sacrifice is not just for the adults. There are points, number one, number two, you can do. No, she said, can she give up her kids? Can you give up your kids? Oh, you know, you might. Listen here. Listen here. That's something you know. <laughs> Oh, that's not to you. Yeah, get them kids. That's the walk I'm saying, y'all. So get them kids. Um, three is to commit to an amount to have in your savings by eight, June 8th. Eight. There's a line there for a reason. June 8th. You're going to write that number down. You're going to put this up. You're going to pray. You're going to hit that number. So, that, so that's going to require wisdom. Wisdom. So you, you're gonna, we're gonna put a number down right there. That this is the the number I want to save in one month. Okay, I want to save up. So that's gonna take some sacrifices. Don't do nothing that's easy, right? No. I'm saving twenty dollars for a month. Uh, let's put a good number down. Put a number that's gonna challenge us. Put a number that's gonna make us have to give up our most, you know, expensive habits. Put a number that's gonna make us have to. Really not eat out. Listen, I you know, know two, three times family. a week. Fast food gonna be the whole. I mean, you know, we did an analysis some years back with us when we were just running, ripping, and running. We was we, now that we were spending, I mean, you could spend two hundred a week just eating out, like easy. I mean, probably sometimes more than that, just eating out, and so and so. I mean, that's a whole thousand dollars right there out, out the gates of just fast food because you're ripping and running. And so um, you, you couple that with your most expensive Amazon. Watch it. Package at the door every day, right? Watch it. And you can, you Watch can save it. some money, right? And so, and so we're doing it just to, I mean, it's not to, to give or nothing. This is for ourselves, right? This is right. here we go. This is praying that God lets us get it go. And then um, on that Sunday, which will actually be June 11th, we're going to bring a $40 seed. Everybody, we're going to sow that seed. We're going to believe big, and Jesus will help us, right? That's right. Jesus will help us. Y'all excited about the sacrifice? Y'all going to marinate on that a little bit. Hallelujah. They're just looking. Pastor, you're excited about the sacrifice. Lord, Lord, Jesus will help us. <laughs> Jesus will help us. All right. We do have some announcements. All kids 17 and under, we have a Mother's Day essay contest up here. So if you want to write something about your mother, you get to choose a prompt, and you're going to text or email the picture to me by Saturday, May 13th. And then we're going to have some outside people judge, and we will have certificates for the winners on Sunday. Okay? So we'll put those on the table. Oh, and teens, if you have lent your $9 for your book for the study, is due to Sister Campbell so she can order your books. I think those are all of our announcements. Is it? We're good. God bless you all. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Let's move. Let's move this mess and for those that are watching online. And bless the Lord for you all. And if um, you feel led to sow online, at our, I know we have our two dollar Tuesdays, and so we want to be able to go back to that. But those that are online and want to sow and support the work of the ministry, we greatly appreciate. 
Yep, yep, you all helping us. And so let's go ahead and, and, and pray as we dismiss. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. Come on, let me pray for myself. God, we honor you, God, for this night, this class. We thank you for every student here. Uh, we thank you for just speaking to our hearts and encouraging us, stretching us, God. We thank you for challenging us to be better with our money. And we pray for the wisdom uh, that is from above, oh God, that will give us understanding and resolve to be able to make uh, better money decisions. Oh God, that we may be able to please you. Oh God, and we pray, God, that you will just continue to bless our families in a special way. Those, that everyone that has continues to support this ministry, we pray a special blessing upon them. Oh God, and we uh, just honor you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all. On three. One, two, three.